Today, we're welcoming Vincent Care Plus, um, a dom domiciliary care service in Westminster. Um, they secured a contract with the local authority to provide block hours of care to residents at a hostel uh, for people experiencing homelessness. Um, the hostel is Edward Alsop Court, which is often referred, referred to throughout um, as EAC. So we're going to play you um, about a 15 minute video where we take you around the hostel and we um, speak to some of the staff members at VCP about um, how they deliver safe and effective outcome based care to, to the residents there. And uh, we're also very lucky to have Nishande here with us today. Um, who is happy to do um, to do a Q and A and answer any questions uh, you have at the end? Ashandi from from Vincent and Care Plus. So, um, so I will hopefully be able to share this video with you now, um, and hopefully you can all hear it. One moment. We're in London's Westminster, home to Buckingham Palace, the Houses of Parliament and some of the richest people in the country. But despite its wealth and power, Westminster also has the highest number of rough sleepers in the UK and a contrastingly high poverty rate. Today I'm visiting Edward Alsop Court, a hostel for men experiencing homelessness. I'm meeting with staff from Vincentian Care Plus, a charity that provides the gentlemen with vital care services here at the hostel. They're going to show me how they meet the variety of unique and often challenging support and care needs of the gentlemen right here at the facility in the heart of London. My name is Sabina Ajay. I was employed by Look Ahead 2017. So by that time, there's a lot of clients here that they need help. So the Look Ahead invited VCP in and they joined us together. And we were looking after the homeless and desperation people. We have some clients that they desperately need one-to-one -one and also they also need attention 24-7. So then they brought in VCP then I, they asked me to join the VCP as well, which it was very, very helpful. They brought a lot of staff in. Then we started taking care of the clients and their needs. From there, we taking some of them to the hospitals and some of them to the care homes and we look after them. There's one agency that they, they came in trying to support as well, but they couldn't because of the clients and their conditions. So they take them out of it and VCP remain main point of care to supporting Look Ahead for the clients. Look Ahead was very, very desperate for VCP to retrain because of the support the VCP staffs are given to the clients. So it was look ahead who retain the VCP and the VCP staffs are doing their very best for the clients and the hostel. As they mingle in the Corman area, a sense of community is evident. Bonds are formed through shared experiences and the unwavering support from the Vincentian Care Plus team. This is the kitchen. Each floor they have uh, one kitchen for like five, four people for the self-users and the VCPs encourage them always to do their lunch and uh, dinner or breakfast. Uh, plus they leave the door open just they know that it's free for them. Plus we encourage them always to do their, like you see Joseph already, he bought his own party and everything. Most time he come here and cook on his time. Sometimes they can miss the dinner because it's limited time for breakfast and dinner. Sometimes they can sleep and they miss the dinner. So the second thing they can do is just come here and uh, and we always encourage them anyway to choose because sometimes the food maybe they don't choose it. The food is there, they just have to take it. So they do their own kind of food. So we encourage them and uh, my name is Namisha George. I do the recruitment for Vincentian Care Plus. I've been doing recruitment for over four years now. 
uh, it's been very challenging to do recruitment um, per se in general but when it comes to um, giving care in a community like this uh, it's been even more challenging However, uh, over the last few years, I've done recruitment over in this field and I can see that people are committed to do this kind of role. Uh, particularly when I try to recruit people and care workers, I give them an overview of what the hostel staff is because we call them the EAC hostel, which is Edward Olds of Court. And I have to tell them the kind of challenging clients that we have, starting from drug abuse to homelessness to alcoholic uh, dependency problems. And uh, honestly, uh, a lot of people, they don't understand the the intensity of this job until they come here because it's a place where you have many different people in in one place sometimes you go to you know only one house and they just see them for a couple of hours and they leave but here when you're in the same building trying to build a rapport but at the same time trying to change their lives it's a very difficult uh, time uh, but thankfully uh, we have being able to find care workers who are able to do it, uh, very committed, uh, especially RMAS, Jay, Sabina, who have been a part of this EAC for a very long period of time. Uh, it definitely showcases that they want to bring about a change in people's life. Uh, at present, we have uh, 12 residents that we support in, in the hostel. And uh, out of that, of course, two of them have moved on to uh, you know better living spaces. Uh, and uh, as far as how they come into the service is very interesting because we have charities who support homeless people. They go in and they speak to the local authorities and that's how we get the contract to come and see them in the hostel. Joseph, uh, he joined us, uh, when did he join us? Christmas Eve last, last year. Christmas Eve last year. I'll be here two years now. Be Christmas yeah. Eve. It's Christmas Eve coming, I'll be here two years. He has been for three years in, in this room. And uh, Joseph is showing every day uh, progressing in uh, his life that we see. Well, I used to walk the streets so much. But, but when I come here, I stayed in my room for quite a while and then I started going out, then I stopped. Um, I, was started, I started cooking and I stopped, I stopped drinking as well. I, I've been bored to drink for quite a while now. So um, and I do my own washing I mean, now and then. He yeah. used to wash for me my clothes. Yeah. Now I wash my own clothes. He's done his own cooking, yeah, he's mm -hmm. bought his own pants. And he started cooking his lunch, mm. and he bought the old clip hair clip. So I give him shave and haircuts like every two weeks. Mm. And uh, like he said, he was not drinking when he came here. Then uh, for the Christmas reason, he started to drink back to drink. And every morning when I come for breakfast to see him, I was encouraging him to because we, as soon as he started drink, he starts stopping there to be active. Like he used to go to the chapel. He was happy. Uh, he was always happy, smiling. Then he was a little bit when I see him, then I was starting to encourage him every day. Joseph one he surprised me after I was really congratulating him. I was very happy. The day I woke in, he said, Jay, today I stopped drinking. So since that time until now, since Christmas, almost now, it's almost uh, nine months since he's been clean. And, and since that time, he became very active. He bought his own pan as you see. He starts cooking. He started to look after himself and uh, I show him how to the, operate the washing machine instead of pit wash for him. So he started going there. Uh, he do most time, he likes showers, taking the evening most time. So uh, yeah, as you see him, he's now he's clean, happy. And he go to see the nurse himself, he got his floor. Uh, he become very active. He go his, do his own shopping and uh, he's living happily now. And uh, I see uh, the progress sometimes could be uh, slow in some of them, but in Joseph, I see that really good progress. And the, the most thing is, I was really care about his emotion. About he is to normal, he's the most simple person is here with Joseph. He was always smiling, he's always nice, he never been rude or aggressive, and thing. Uh, plus, I was encouraging to be like to be active, interact with others. And one was yesterday, before yesterday, he was even go outside to coffee with your friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, which is it is a good sign instead of just sitting here by himself. They come and clean my room, but then I started buying things to do it myself. And um, yeah. <laughs> so 
so that I can do the things myself. And how long he was outside? No, homeless was, was for 10 years. So for him, this everything he was needed. So now look, as you see, like he bought his own fridge, he bought his own TVs, clean stuff, everything. So he tried to live like normal life, day, like, like, uh, so, yeah. That's what I see always progressing every time. And I always congratulate him because uh, they encourage him more. I've been joined since uh, 2020, on November, for three years now I've been working here. And uh, every single day is uh, different, challenging, and it's very complicated uh, with individuals, how we deal with them. Uh, their need is completely different, and uh, it's not like always the same. So we always we prepare ourselves, we've been trading. We've been trading uh, very well how to deal with them, and uh, especially with uh, challenge behavior and everything. Uh, the body language, how to speak to them, the eye contact, the smiling, and uh, not keep your hand like you're going to box them or something. So, like I said before, like we build more the trusting. Once they trust you, the job is easy for them and for us. But at the beginning, always it's very rough. They become very aggressive, defensive. Uh, uh, they think everybody will attack them. They don't trust anyone. So we have shown them that they are the reason we are there is for them. They are the center here and uh, give them the best care to, to meet their care. So, yeah, we, yeah. With, um, for example, this one, one guy is uh, he's still here. He was extremely aggressive. Nobody can talk to him, even he can't say good morning to you. He just didn't go, just do your job and go from there. So, from time to time, I'm getting close to him, even ignore me. I say, just greeting him every day. And one day he learned, I mean, he said, I mean, what are you going to give up? I mean, he keeps saying, ignorant. I ignore him, but I told him that's my job. I came here to look after him. So, I, that's what I will do because uh, just to show you that I'm, I'm not like joking here. I'm, I really mean it to help you. Since that time, he really we build that uh, trust. So now he's open every time we go even we chat. And another challenge we have here: uh, some of them they are very quiet. Some of them also they are, they talk like a lot, so they can take your time. So we have to use wisdom how to like uh, stop them or like. Uh, to move to the other clients because they can't just talk for hours, especially if they take something or they are drunk or something. So it need a lot of uh, uh, wisdom how to not upset them, but also at the same time to move on from the room or something. So yeah, it is, as I said, it's different challenge always. But so far we've been doing the best. And uh, since I came here, we never call police. We never have any single problem either with the support workers or with the client with the care we've been very peaceful and we see the progress that some of them they saw slowly some of them they show very rapidly so uh, it's, it's make it a it's encourage you also when you see the fruit always every day see them progressing when before that we were not working at block hours the time the the allotment of the time was kind of challenging it was confusing like if you're supposed to go to this client for five minutes. Other clients also will be need, in need of us. So since we, it became blocked hours, we are able to apportion it the equal time to each client as it requires. When I came to the hostel, the, the work was quite not simple, straightforward as, as people see it outside. It was quite complicated and challenging. But through the help of my colleagues, and especially Jay, we collaborate, we establish a good rapport to help the client as in domestic help and other stuff and most of the time we go beyond we doing domestic um, work for them some of them now like, you see that they are bored they are not in the mood sometimes we go to their room speak to them see they build a, a trust with us so they are able to share in their challenges they're able to share in their concern with us as we leave the hostel we are reminded of the incredible work that goes on behind the scenes the challenges faced here are real, but so are the victories, no matter how small. The Vincentian Care Plus team continues to provide a safe and supportive environment for these gentlemen, helping them rewrite their life stories one chapter at a time. Well, <laughs> um, a huge thank you to VCP and Edward Orthop Court for allowing us to, to film there and, and share that incredible story. I was completely moved when I went um, and hopefully that came across in the video, um, just how much the, the care staff at VCP care and, you know, and, and take the Vincentian values and really put that, that into practice. 
Um, I'm going to, uh, we've got a bit of time now for, for a Q&A. Um, we've got Nishande here from BCP, who is um, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so if anyone does have a question, please feel free to raise your hand. It could be about the care that takes place at the hostel, or you could ask a bit more about how they manage to secure the, the contract with the local authority to, to, to get into the hostel. So um, if anyone has a question, please feel free to <laughs> give me a wave. I see anyone. Um, Sister Margaret? I, um, Rihanna, I'd be interested to hear how the administrative staff in Edward Alsop liaise with our, with our staff and with our care workers. Is there any friction or any challenges there? Uh, Nishanda, you're on mute. <laughs> Yeah, I was just checking up. <laughs> That's an amazing question. I think in the beginning stages, we've been going into Edward Allsop Court for quite some time. And initially, um, as referenced in the video, there were multiple agencies involved in the care and support of the gentleman, one of the agencies being Look Ahead itself. So there was a little bit of friction in the initial stages. But once I think um, things were put aside and it was established that these gentlemen need intensive support, not just, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. They need that one to one. They need that 24 hour care and support. I think battle lines were pretty much drawn and VCP um, provides care like no other, apparently. Um, so um, the, the gentlemen that have been working there, the ladies that have been working there, they are completely stellar. Their reputations, honestly, they're in very high demand. Um, so they, it's, they manage everything and they rely solely on those care workers. There are support workers as a part of the housing side of things, and they will liaise with the gents with regards to like their welfare benefits, and things like that and moving on and the housing side of things but the majority of their support comes from the care and I think that's definitely acknowledged and appreciated by the administrative team that are based in the hostel. Lovely. Thanks uh, Sean. How are you sister? <laughs> Very well thank you. <laughs> always nice to see you. It's always nice to connect. Thank you. Sister Maureen. Oh, you're on mute, Sister Maureen. Yes, I'm just thinking, Nishande, during COVID, it must have been a nightmare trying to, to care for the residents. Uh, can you mm. say anything about how it worked during that period of time? Because we're, we're quite privileged in the fact that we're based in the south part of Westminster, so we're quite compartmentalised, we're sectioned off from everything. So Edward also caught, they almost became a base of operations as well as the previous office we had in Grosvenor Gardens. So the, the team work so well with everyone, not only the people that work there, but the carers outside in the community. They buy each other lunch, they share gloves, they share resources, they communicate and things like that. So I think that teamwork and those values, COVID was obviously very challenging, but in terms of providing support, they, the team just knuckled down and got on with it. Anything that they needed, we kept, you know, do you guys need anything? Do you need us to do anything? No, we've got it under, just bring the PPE, bring the gloves and bring the, the coffee vouchers and they just get on. So I think COVID was challenging for everyone, but for us, because we've got such a strong team and such a resilient team and they are there regardless of pay, regardless of hours, it is not, as we all know, I don't think anybody goes into care thinking you're going to, you know, um, be a millionaire. You go into it for the reasons of trying to make change um support vulnerable people so because that is the team's primary focus they're very much unwavering in the face of adversity and covid and other challenges um Nishande, i actually have a question myself um did okay. you come across any challenges at all when um you went you went to the local authority um to move into those block hours when asking for extra hours did um did you come across any barriers there and, and how did you overcome that? 
Yes. So my in my previous life, I worked in supported housing. Um, but when you move into a different borough, there's different ways of working things. So we've been having this block hour conversation since I think 2016. Um, so it's been an ongoing thing. How is it going to work? And unfortunately, it solely comes down to finance and funding. And it's unfortunate that it's taken this long to get it right for these gentlemen. As um, Derek mentioned in the video, when they were working literally time and task, where one person's got an hour, one person's got half an hour, when all the gentlemen are in need, they all need to have breakfast, they all need personal care. It was very, very regimented. And the team, <clears throat> excuse me, weren't flourishing as much as they are now. So I think <clears throat> we're still working out the kinks. It's technically a very brand new thing for Westminster, not for us, because we've been pushing this since 2016, but it's definitely very new and it's become the jewel in their crown. It's something that they reference, you know, this is how the team work. If we can get this right, this is how we want the rest of the other hostels to run. So we're trying to um, build a standard that can be followed to support everyone mm -hmm. that's in need. That's amazing. Great. Thank you. Do I see someone else raise their hand? Um, Sister Maria? Hi there. That was a fantastic presentation. Can I just say that to begin with? It was absolutely brilliant. Um, you do so much and put so much of yourselves into working with these, these guys. When they move on from the centre, do you accompany them as they move on and keep up with them when they're out there again in the big bad what we found apart from i think there's only one generally we've had more than two people move on the two people have been most recent we are part of their moving process not on the administrative side but in terms of ensuring they've got new clothes um ensuring their everything's packed up and organized and we have had a couple of staff that will go in accompany the gents to where they're moving to we had a gentleman i believe he moved to gloucester it was quite, yeah, quite a distance and he was very anxious and we got the additional time authorised so the carer could accompany him on that journey. Although these gentlemen do have support workers, the carers are doing everything. They see them morning, noon and evening. So that that is the people they have the rapport with. So we try to get in contact and, oh, you know, get updates from the social workers. But if they move out of the borough, unfortunately, we lost that contact. Thank you. Any final questions? We've got Sister Maureen. Nishandi, I love it when you use the word rapport, because mm -hmm. if anything, the Vincentian charism is a relational charism. Mm -hmm. You know, we are there in relationship with people. Mm -hmm. um, the staff at VCP do the VIVAT training. Do, would you mm -hmm. like to comment on how the values training helps them in this relationship model of service? What well, definitely. I think, I, as you would know, sister, I champion the VIVAT training. I think everyone, even the cleaners, should have it. I think it serves as a factory reset for the way that you work. I think seeing, we did a, a big turnaround, I believe the year before last, making sure that everyone had that VIVAT training. Every single person in VCP had the VIVAT training. And I think when, you're, when you give so much of yourself to support people, you can become quite tired emotionally, physically, you can get frustrated. And I think having training, having VIVAT training, it just realigns your thinking and reminds you of, this is why we're here. This is what we're here to do. And everybody that we see leaving the training is just like, yeah, ready to go. I, I feel refreshed. I'm gonna go out there and, 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 and push those values in everything that I do within my employment and within my personal life. We've got a lot of um, staff who volunteer elsewhere or we've got a couple of um, pastors of local churches, wives of, of um, uh, pastors of local churches, and they push amongst their colleagues. This is the way to work. This is the way, if you're getting frustrated, speak to the office, take a bit of time off, um, talk to us. 
because we're human at the end of that day and it does take a lot out of you dealing with challenging people you I, I personally go home and sit in silence for about two hours just to decompress and reset myself and I feel like the Vibrat training is exactly that a factory reset of your thinking mm. thanks Nishanda We've got time for another question, if anyone has one. Uh, Sister Kathleen. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not Kathleen, it's not Kathleen. Kathleen, no. Kathleen not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's lovely to see you all. Um, I just wanted to ask, when you're doing recruitment, do you recruit specifically for the hostel or do you recruit generally for those who are doing work at home as well? How does that work and how does that fit with the training? How much interaction is there? So because we've got quite big ambitions, the VCP, we recruit everyone at the same standard. We want staff that are adaptable, flexible and able to manage in any environment where the need is. And I feel like we, I feel like I know that um, we recruit staff who don't necessarily have a care background, but they have to have the right attitude, the right approach and the right resilience. And we train that across the board, especially considering COVID and the um, staff um, shortages and things like that. We need to be able to move staff around and everybody, including office staff, need to be prepared to roll up their sleeves and fit into an environment to fill that need. So our recruitment is very much values based. Um, very much yes the experience is always a plus it's always a benefit but if you don't have the right attitude and you don't care it, it, this role and this organization is definitely not for you thank you Nishanda. anybody else no, well, I think we, we covered um so much there. And again, just a huge thank you to VCP, Nishande and the whole team and Edward Osop Court for allowing us to, to film in there. It was an incredible experience. Um, It's, yeah, you know, it, it, the values just shine through that whole story. So it's um it, it's a great one to share. Um, This will be recorded um and put up onto our YouTube channel. So um, if you'd like to rewatch, you, you're most welcome to. And um, please do join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. if you can. Um, we have St. Joseph's and their board of advisors joining us, which we're very excited about. So I um, hope to see you all there. But thank you all again for joining today and, and a big thank you to VCP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks very much.